renovating our house whilst also progressing with the major regeneration projects that we have on the land is a big balancing act, especially when you throw a fussy and nap resistant baby into the mix. Hello, sleep regression. I'm very happy to report that we are finally through the worst of the sleep regression and coming out the other side. So we're getting into a routine and finally starting to get a lot more work done. So I'm so happy to be able to share with you in this video what we've been doing at the house over the last few months, as well as planting another four more fruit trees on our land. So let's start by going back a little bit to the beginning of January. Modern technology is pretty impressive. We have so much information at our fingertips nowadays and we've been using some apps to follow and predict some of Isabel's big development stages. So when we saw that around the seven to eight months point is when separation anxiety starts to kick in. We decided six months old was the right time to get her out of our bedroom and into her own space. Decorating her nursery became high priority on the list of house renovation projects. The first one for 2024. As with the old houses, this 120 year old doer upper needed a bit more than just a lick of paint. Parts of the curved ceiling between the beams were old and flaky. We needed to scrape back the bad areas and repair the damaged patches to get them ready for painting. Well, it's definitely hard to do these bits of the ceiling when you're upside down, but it's getting there. So we are battling sleep progression at the moment with Isabel and it honestly feels like that bit in uh, the film about a boy where Hugh Grant talks about living in um, units of time. We're basically just living in like 30 second moments and trying to get what we can done in those little slots of time. Like breakfast, one unit. Breastfeeding, one unit. Isabel's nap, one unit. Or if we're incredibly lucky, two units. One very much needed cup of coffee, one unit. But split out multiple times throughout the day and reheated about three times. Parents, I'm sure you get me. If you know, you know. So I'm currently using nap times to try and get as much done on the renovation as I possibly can. Isabel's in our room and it means that we're able to work on the nursery because she's not in there. She's not sleeping in there yet. But I have to try and get as much as I possibly can done before she wakes up. So I'd better stop talking and just get back to it. I've just started to mask off the uh, beams here so that I can get a, a relatively straight line. But I think actually I'm going to be better just using a steady hand along the way because I'm a bit worried that this masking tape is actually just going to strip off some of the uh, varnish that's on the beams. They've been treated and then obviously varnished with something, but we're not sure what product it is and whether it is actually the best product. And there's a tiny bit flaking off. Um, and I don't want to make that worse. So I think I'll just use a brush to cut in and make as neat a line as I can. Um, and I think that will probably look better than masking it all off and then creating a mess. I was ready to start painting the 
ceiling this morning and when I went downstairs to go and get the paintbrushes from the garage I realised that last time we painted we did a really really terrible thing and we didn't clean the brushes so that meant that we had four brushes that were completely solid um, full of paint, there was no way you were using a bit of soap and water to get those clean and it's Sunday so I thought that that was painting out the window. So I had a quick search online and had a look around at different remedies and ways to actually clean brushes. A lot of them are coming up with um, this particular like oil soap, Murphy's oil soap I think it was called. Obviously shops closed, can't go and get anything or even look for an alternative to that. And then I came across a remedy using white distilled vinegar. This is something that we have in all the time because we use it for cleaning. So it was really good to see something that I might be able to give a go today to see if I can get these brushes back in action. What you do is you take the brushes, you put them into a saucepan and fill it up with the distilled vinegar until it covers all of the bristles. Then you leave it to sit for about an hour, two hours, until it just starts to, to make the bristles kind of slightly pliable. They don't have to be flexible, they don't have to move a lot, but just to show that it's starting to work. Then you put it on the stove and you heat up the, the pan with the brushes and the vinegar, and then you leave it to simmer until those bristles start to soften. So every now and then you just kind of move them about, agitate them, see if you can get those bristles to start coming apart and the paint to start breaking down. And then after about 20 minutes or so, they should be good enough to take out of the vinegar, give them a good wash with soapy water, hot soapy water, and work those bristles to get all of the remaining paint out. I then just used a little bit of uh, white wool to scratch away any of the bits that were on the metalwork or on the handles, and they've actually come out really, really well. So these three have been saved from the bin, which is brilliant, means that I can get on with using these ones for this project. But the one that had an oil-based paint, it didn't work. I did read online that it probably wouldn't work because vinegar can't break down the oils, um, so I will have to use something else for that. Probably something like turpentine, paint stripper, um, but we'll see, there might be another remedy that I can try. But three out of four is pretty good and gives me enough to be able to get on with this job. It's a gorgeous Sunday today, despite the wind, um, but we've got four more trees that we're going to get into the land and extend the orchard a little bit. We've bought a pomegranate, another peach, a cherry, and a walnut. Walnuts can grow really quite big, um, eventually, maybe in like 20 years. So we're going to plant it in this section uh, that's just near to the house, because hopefully then as it gets big and strong and grows a lot in the future, it will create a little bit of shade around this area. Um, and they're just quite nice trees to look at as well. So we're gonna plant that one here. Down from this area, we've then got the veg patch down on the lower bancal, and that's where we're going to put the other peach. Along from where we've already put the plum and the fig, we're then going to put the pomegranate over here. And then down the other side of the house, we're going to put the cherry.
we're back up at the land this morning and we're going to plant this pomegranate tree just here. So this is the last spot, just around from the house. And this is where we're going to be putting the cherry. morning I've just come up to the land whilst Isabel is having a nap to quickly give the trees all the water and just check how everything's doing. These little rock waterers that we put in are actually working really really well to make sure that we can just put water straight down into the root of the tree and make sure that it's getting a really good drink every day. So we're putting about half a bucket in every day at the moment, um, about two and a half litres or so, just to make sure that it gets a really, really good soaking in these first few weeks and hopefully gives it the best chance to take hold and get those roots going. So the fig tree here, you can see, is already starting to do quite well. Lots of little leaf buds and the leaves are just starting to pop out. There isn't any new growth on the plum yet, but we've been told that that's very normal and it's a bit too early in the season. But all these little nodes are where the leaf buds should come once they're ready to grow. This little flat peach, or nectarine actually, because I don't think it has a uh, fairy skin, I think it has the um, smooth skin. This one's actually doing really well. So it's got a lot of leaf buds coming and actually you can just see a little flower forming there on top. So that's looking very healthy. The Nispero is doing really well too, with lots of new leaves coming and plenty of new growth, so that's really good. I'm most excited about the almond, look at this. So it's lost all of its blossom now, but it's still got all of the little flowers on there and loads and loads of leaf growth. So some of the ones that are further down the mountain also are covered in leaves now already and all of their blossoms gone. Um, a few further kind of halfway up the mountain are around about this stage um, or some of them are still in bloom. So it's really good to see that ours is growing leaves. Hopefully that means that it's nice and healthy and we're doing the best we can with the rooting hormone and watering it every day and hopefully we're going to get a really nice healthy tree.
today we're going to be putting some of the final touches on the nursery and hopefully we'll get her in for her first night tonight. On Wednesday, he ate through three crumbs, but he was still hungry. So Isabel has been in her nursery for a few weeks now and has really settled in well. She sleeps very well in here, um, waking a couple of times during the night still, but she's still only little, so I think we can forgive her for that. But for now, we're going to do nap time routine and get her ready to go down for a little bit. And I think that's where we'll leave it for this one. So we hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of a renovation of the inside of the townhouse and also adding some new trees to the land. We've got so many exciting projects to share with you over the coming months and hopefully years. So please do consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already and we'll see you on the next one. Oh no, we got like pipes. We think that maybe there must have been a water leak at some point. <laughs>